and welcome to Plant Park Podcast today. Plant Park Podcast is your number one hub for book reviews and crucial conversations in education. The show is brought to you by Plant Park Consult, the choice hub for news, instructional design materials, teacher trainings, collaborations, counselings, and everything education. I'm your host on the show. My name is Oluwatosi Mogwadrante. Thank you so much for joining, for liking, for sharing. You know, it's been an amazing time with you this year. Thank you so much. Okay, so today is book review day. We are reviewing the book Joy Incorporated by Richard Sheridan. Richard Sheridan is the co-founder and CEO of Menlo Innovations. Okay, so the book has a headliner that says how we built a workplace people love. All right. So in the front page of the book, the book actually has a very attractive cover. I like the yellow background and yellow and white background. Okay. So the book has something in the front cover that I would like to read to you. It says it was written by John Tom Peters. Tom Peters says Joy Incorporated is a marvelous title, sure, but this masterpiece delivers and delivers and delivers. I beg you to keep taking breaths and imagining the world that Richard Sheridan reveals. Then, give it the best shot you can. I truly beg you. Okay, so let's read one more forward. The one more thing uh, forward, one more review that was on in the book, yeah, so that was written in the book. So I really like reading all of these sessions, the forward, the reviews I've done about about the book by other people. Because first of, you get to meet amazing people. I mean, a lot of times when I'm reading books like this, I I just go on social media and go check out those people, and in fact, add those books that they have written as part of my to read list and so my bucket list of books i want to read it is an amazing session let's read a forward by france johansen france johansen is the author of the click moment and the ceo of the medici group he says an amazing book about a stunning idea can you can you deliberately create a corporate culture that challenges every conventional wisdom on how, we, on how a workplace should and must operate while simultaneously skyrocketing performance. Sheridan says yes and outlines how he and his team did it. It's a reverting story that left me deeply inspired. Hmm. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so the book is about 226 pages and in fact from every sentence in the book there are so there's just there's just a lot of wisdom for you to pick practical hands-on wisdom okay so the forward was done by his friend kerry patterson kerry patterson said that richard was due to was was going to write the wrong book that in fact he had written the manuscript of a book called change incorporated but he kerry he knew that Although that was a very good book and perhaps an important book, it was not the book Richard was meant to write. Richard was meant to, from from Richard's personal experience and from what he has been able to build at Melo's, he is definitely supposed to write something that is culture changing and takes a deep place, like a stance in, like a critical stance in things because he has the experience he has the methods and he has practicalized this in his daily life and this this got me thinking that so, so imagine that he had written he had literally almost finished writing the manuscript of a book and his friend talked him out of writing another book that's how he now wrote to joy incorporated like change the whole direction of everything and all so imagine having friends like that in your life friends such friends are so important may we be such a friend and May God give us friends like that, honestly. Okay, so let's move on to the introduction. Introduction says, why joy? Okay, so joy sounds very ridiculous in, in a business book. But Richard Sheridan say, insists that joy is an intricate human desire 
that has that and there's nothing that should take it away from where we spend a chunk of our adult years that is work and joyful and that is so obvious that joyful people produce better outcomes and life and and and, and that joy lifts things okay so joy is greater than happiness because joy is not circumstantial like he's not dependent on circumstances at all so richard sheridan says that he knows the business value of joy and has been able to bring it to the fore of his company that is Menlo's innovation Menlo, Menlo innovations people actually go on tour to Menlo's uh, to experience firsthand he said that in 2020 2012 alone Menlo hosted 241 separate tour teams totaling 2193 visitors like amazing so at this point i really think that <laughs> you should go check up menlo innovations online like you really need to check them up like this is too good to and contagious to just overlook okay so they didn't pay me for this ad advert i'm doing no but trust me, I will always like to share nice things with you. Okay, so Richard Sheridan says that he enjoys leading people on tours, like when people come to his company. And he usually starts by saying, Welcome to Menlo, a place that has created an intentional culture focused on the business value of joy. Interesting, amazing. Okay, so he writes something that I would like to read out to you as we wrap up the introductory part of the book. He says, With this book, I invite you to peek inside our doors at Menlo and see what joy can look like. Feel the energy of a space that is wide open, flexible, and devoid of physical barriers to human communication. Hear the team at work as peers of people engage in active and animated conversations see the walls covered with paper and yarn push pins and colorful sticky dots learn everything you can about how we created joy incorporated and search along with us for the answers to the following questions what is an intentionally joyful culture this is something you may have to ask yourself like what's is an intentionally joyful culture like if a culture is intentionally joyful what will it look like to you how do you reinvent a broken culture and to and get to joy can you do this while being profitable these are questions we need to ask ourselves okay so there's a fun fact i would like to tell you at this point before we round off the round up this this part of the book Menlo Innovations has received quite a bit of notice for his unique culture. So like they've won awards and all of that. But out of all the things that they wrote out, there's one that specifically got me very delighted that I said I was going to mention. Among this numerous re recognition, it's been recognized as one of the 10 happiest places to work on the planet. Trust me, go and Google the remaining nine places. <laughs> I'm sure you must be very inquisitive to know. Okay, let's go on a quick commercial break. We will be right back with you. The blood path. All right, so we are starting today's review from chapter two. Chapter two says the title is Space and Noise. So there's a quote at the beginning that I would like to read to you. It was written by Winston Churchill in 1943. It says, first, we shape our buildings, then they shape us. Honestly, so this is usually how I review books. I finish reading a chapter, soak it in, like ruminate on it. Then I come back, hold the pen, pencil and write out my review or type it out. You understand? So, when I finished reading this book, I was like, I mean, oh, like, what did I just finish reading? Like, this is super amazing. Okay, so let me just get right into it so you can enjoy the gist. Menlo Innovations is named after 
Thomas Edison's lab in Menlo and they they share like literally like similar experiences and culture and all of that Richard Sheridan says that most organizations are like graveyards they are boring they are bland in their outlook and meanwhile such organizations are looking forward to how to build great teams they are buying more equipment going for more seminars and all of that that's not going to happen honestly like with Richard Sheridan was like with what he's saying, it is quite obvious because they consult him, organizations consult him and all of that on how to build a joyful workplace and everything. But for him, he's like, you guys are not even ready at all at all. At Menlo, he says that at Menlo, it is very loud, it is noise, noisy and it is joyful. And it is not just only loud, it is intentionally and purposefully loud honestly it just reminds me of nsppd <laughs> pastor jerry is a what god cannot do just does not exist because <laughs> like trust me those people are really really joyful and active people okay so at menlo everyone works in an open space with movable chairs and tables for context they sit according to need so if you're working like on a project together, you're mostly going to sit together. So you have tables of 10 tables, 5 tables, 2 tables, depending on what the project is that they are working on. It's easier to build trust when you see each other's eyes, read innuendos and subtle cues. We are humans and need interactions. We are built to be social. Okay, that is like something to really sink in and think about right now there is no there's originally no special cubicle for attending to clients or special guests everyone gets to eavesdrop richard says that client conversations affect everyone and put food on everybody's table and it it just adds up in the long run of things you understand like to the bottom line of things and so he does not see anything and and even the organization does not see any reason for those kind of uh, what they call it of for those kind of meetings to be in cubicles and all of that because he doesn't even call it his dropping he doesn't call it private conversation he says anything that he's saying with client or anybody saying his client is unhealthy it, it, and if anybody wants to listen it's not like the person has gone body or the person is of being over sabi or being over curious that it is just a healthy curiosity of a team members and 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 it is very healthy and should be encouraged but he says now that um they are cubicles because not because they need it because some people can't even cope they, they can't concentrate they have really bad concentration span attention span and all of that they can't concentrate when conversations are going on and everything so usually when people come and they they feel excuse me when people come and they feel the need to maybe for more quiet and everything they go into all of those cubicles cubicles and offices to have their meetings but usually the norm is just that everything just happens out there and there so internal decisions are also taken on the office floor well let me even add here that they don't even call it office they call it factory is raw is rugged everything happens there and it is nice okay Everyone is given a chance to impute and have and to have eureka moments and innovative sparks in the midst of discussions. And there's another thing he even said about the place that you know, thinking about an organization like this is is something really exciting that I would like to see and I would like to try out some more. He says that you can paint the walls. Kids are allowed. In fact, they have play sessions and play areas for kids, and that dogs are not banned so you can come into the office typically and see dogs and they also don't have technical teams you know people in offices sometimes i wonder just maybe to just do something quick you need to maybe call technical team and all of those kind of stuff no that there are no there's no production team that will help you move things and all of that move your chairs technical no 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 no, no. if you need to move your bed just slide it to the other part of the room or to anywhere you want to go to he also says that there are no c-suite executive chairs or offices that even the ceo himself the richard sheridan that wrote the book he says that he sits on the floor like 
or like you sit on the floor like on the factory building like everyone else like he's just there with everybody in fact he said that he only has a mark on his table like an old mark mark and he feels that that mark is literally the oldest laptop in in the organization and he feels that he doesn't even need he doesn't need a faster laptop laptop as a ceo what does he do he reads mails he makes researches he he he, he makes decisions and all those kind of simple things he doesn't need a better computer See so the people that need it are the programmers and the organization should spend the money and the resources getting them so he was like the fact that it's even there is not even <laughs> that it is where his team the team places him that he is or that there are days that they even move his table maybe they need his input on a project and all that i know we say that we said that they they like work together in teams and you see to people you're working on a project with so he richard sheridan just said that you know what that he actually richard sheridan said that he actually really 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 enjoys the the the, the way things work in the organization that they just put him wherever his input is needed and he just sits there so let's note something in this in at this point because there's a high probability to just think oh they're just cool guys and all of that it's not just about the cool or that like this is an award winning and groundbreaking very profitable organization it is a it is a software company you know it's all of these software tech companies that people are meant to be serious and all of those kind of things and maybe you grab those kind of boring looking people not at all at men low at all at all okay so they are very joyful in their being they enjoy what they do they are very joyful in their being they enjoy what they do and they are at their very best like always okay so there's a book that we actually did a review you are too good to feel this but you should listen to that book review i think it will also help you understand some things like we are going to say here okay so man um, richard sheridan was on like okay so you know the next thing on the average person's mind is that ah no that kind of organization where people can see your your laptop when you are working it does and they don't like it blah 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 blah, blah. that the noise the noise how will people focus and everything so he now said something like and that should, that really just changed a lot of my perspective he said that and let me read it to you he said have you noticed people in conventional office spaces using earphones listening to music while they do their work the point is that as in that points to the fact that humans are not built for definite silence of conventional office spaces that's not how to generate flow earbuds are even banned at mellows at mellow so you can imagine he said don't ignore the opportunity to take big risk with physical setup and the auditory atmosphere space and noise play a huge factor in creating the opportunity for allowing teamwork to to work to work its magic space and noise can also get you up for a powerful competitive advantage that is a team that can learn faster than your competitors this is actually amazing like okay so this book was written before the pandemic i mean before the coronavirus pandemic and one thing i just look forward to is richard sheridan giving us like a a what they call it a sequel of this book a a second edition because all of these things he's saying they are very amazing like this book was actually originally written in 2013 all of these things which are sheridan is saying and i look forward to him bringing up principles and helping us cope in the new remote work hybrid work spaces and all of that okay so richard sheridan maybe i should send a mail please sir come and do a second edition for us we really look forward to that all right so there's a cool fact that i would like you to know at this point the fact is that the team as mellows are called melonians that is so cool and in fact it ignites a spirit of 
togetherness so did you actually also know that the team at plant path consult is called plant panthers that is like amazing beautiful people joyful team with a personally meaningful and joyful mission we take up teacher trainings train the teacher train the trainer sessions learning sessions for kids and adults instructional design projects counselings collaborations and everything quality education you should check us up on all of our social media platforms on google facebook instagram linkedin at plumper consult or mail us at plumperc at gmail.com the plant panthers will be really looking forward to working on a project with you let's go on a quick commercial break we'll be right back to discuss chapter three <music> all right thank you so much good to be back on the show thanks for listening up to this point remember to like share subscribe if you're subscribed give to that your friends share with everybody on your social media network this is too good to listen to it alone all right okay so chapter three says freedom to learn freedom to learn okay so it starts with a quote by peter senge peter senge is the author of the fifth discipline he says in the long run the only sustainable source of competitive advantage is the organization's ability to learn faster than your competition in the long run the only sustainable source of competitive advantage is the organization's ability to learn faster than your competition all right so let, let me let me let me start from okay how this start, chapter started was that richard sheridan said he went on a for a conference with somebody at his office kelly kelly k-e-a-l-y okay so when they went to the conference and you know they had technical teams and everything fun fact is the fact that kelly started working at menlo immediately after she graduated from school so she has ever probably she has never been in the organization, you understand? She has only had the Menlo experience. So when, but of course she has heard, she had heard terrible stories of funny workplaces and everything. So she now said that when she, um, she, which Sheridan was like, when they were there, she found the way the developers and the technical guys and everybody at the conference, she, the, she found the way they were introducing themselves very, very well. She was like, why would people talk about themselves like this? So what was happening was that they would meet each other and say, Hey, hi, my name is Dave. Oh, I'm a, I'm a JavaScript person. And the other person says, Oh, my name is Tosi. I'm a Python, yes, Python programmer. She was like, why will you define yourself by a programming language? A programming language that a new technology can, can come up now and your programming language has expired. So when she now said, when she was looking at them weird, they're like, so you are from Menlo, so what should happen? She was like, just say that I'm a technical person and I enjoy what I'm doing. Because the truth of the matter is that it's very important that you're able to learn. You understand, like learn on the go and everything. They found it weird, but of course they found it very insightful. And and which I showed that was like, that is what uh, specialist doctors do that's what people do in specialty they try to just focus on their specialty say no as you go on in your field be, um, build a specialty this 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 that and as much as that is good that has its advantages but the truth of the matter is that in the long run people don't look at the holistic view of things and sometimes you just get technology coming up and people people just lose out in the whole scheme of things i mean people pe- people are no longer relevant in the market so richard sheridan was like you know what was important for an organization is people's ability to learn the freedom to learn you understand very very important so the second thing that he discussed in this chapter is about peering it was like it was like people people should work in organizations in teams 
and that's what he's done at mainly like people work in pairs like of twos even if you're working on a project and people are all turning the group you would always work with somebody like there's always a peer and the, the, the your peer is changed every week you understand your peer member or your peer group or whatever you should call it is always changed every week so every week you get to work with a new person what this does is that you learn how to get along you understand because it's the goal is that you're supposed to work with everybody in the team you understand so we are you, are, you, are, you learn how to get along with everybody you're all everybody's body there's a body system in the organization and there is no other what they call it there's no click and everything because this week you are with this person this week you are with the other person it it's it, it, it helps productivity because people it says that quality so as so as when four ego eyes are on the screen and they achieve superior results in shorter time and then learning can happen faster learning can happen really 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 fast really really quick so he also says says that and and there's something he, he mentioned that i would like us to talk, talk about he was like in the organization they have a well-developed curiosity that allows them to see what others may be overlooking so learning how to learn fast and of course as a group is where menlo shines so learning how to le- how to learn fast and learning as a group is where menlo shines and this is very essential even to hr persons and all even in organizations when you're looking for someone to 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 hire as much as it's good to hire the specialty or this person has experience in this and everything hire somebody that is passionate about the job that is personally meaningful to them and somebody that is willing to learn trust me see the, uh, we always say something in education that learning how to learn is more important than what a, t- a child a learner is learning this is so important it reinforces it big time in, in multiple direct dimensions hr process please recruitment specialists give people the opportunity to shine in like give them the opportunity to shine wherever they are in because sorry excuse me because the way the world is going these days what you know today may be obsolete tomorrow so one of the things i also guess we we get at plant path when people say you know just do counseling or do instructional materials focus on what you remember i'm like you can't really do instructional design instructional materials if you don't know curriculum development if you don't know how learning classrooms go these all these things work hand in hand together and and that's why we are we just have that unique selling point that you know we take on project on everything education and in fact our teams are such that no matter what you want to work on we, we cook up your team for you and you we deliver on your project these things are very 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 essential okay so we we should also note the fourth thing he says here the fourth learning point here on in this chapter is that learning tears down walls of knowledge okay so he basically talks here about about organizations that have learning towers learning towers are like people in organization that the organization cannot do without this person has to always be around and all of those things so that thing is very bad for organizations because once that person leaves the organization is always going to run into problem so at at menlo because they are always peering there's one no proper body that has like mono, uh, uh, monopoly of knowledge about something and if somebody needs to go on a break maybe family emergency or even go on their break and all of that because it can easily go because the project the team can 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 run without them so, you understand so in organizations i feel that a lot of people like to be knowledge hard because that feeling of oh i'm very important and everything but in the long run, it bites your organization and it bites them because they really don't go on breaks. They don't go on breaks. They can't really relax because they have to always be, uh, be there, which is not good for productivity. And there's no even assurance that that person will always be there. The person may find a better job and just leave in your understand. Okay, so also, fifth thing is that peering pushes personal growth. You can't even hide in Menlo because hiring, firing, promotion decisions are peer-led everything is based on you understand on your peers and everything so you had better just been a very good teacher 
and a very good student at Menlo's. Six learning point is that they have something called lunch and learn. So it's it's very it's very nice to know that learning happens really quick and fast in peers you understand but then the transfer of that knowledge to teams can take time and be very slow so what they do at menlo is that lunch and learn i think i think that that's actually weekly they they, they just grab lunch together sit down at the corner of the office and and somebody is the teacher for the day teaches about a subject a topic they are working on or maybe when they went for a conference or something you understand the person just comes and teaches about that stuff and and they are really happy and stand for doing that so like the person comes to teach something new he said that there was a time that someone went on a on a what they call a business trip and came back and taught them how to do story mapping and that that's been very uh, like important essential to their work so that i think i really like this idea of this launch lunch and learn he was done he now said the seventh thing he said is that that's like sequel to lunch and learn he said he spoke about teaching the world your culture that whatever it is that is your culture your mission you should put it out there to the world you understand he now said that he also says that the lunch and learn session sometimes they are community projects that people in like similar organizations and all of that they come around students can just attend you understand and sometimes they also bring external facilitators so back to teaching your the world your culture it says that the the mellow's vision mellow innovations vision is to end suffering as it relates to technology mellow's mission is to end suffering as it relates to technology so no part of the company's process is a trade secret and they teach everything in their pay classes so like they just put everything out there so people can learn and everything the last thing i would like to say to you in this chapter you remember the chapter is called freedom to learn i will just read it out it says peering is the atomic element of our learning organization it produces a joy in learning that most of us haven't experienced in years perhaps since elementary school when everything was new and we and all we had to do was absorb it so think about this freedom to learn is very important in organizations as individuals learning how to learn is more important than what you know especially in this very fast paced world thank you for listening to up to this point we are actually this is 32 minutes already wow okay so let's just take one more chapter of the book review and you will let us know if you want us to review more chapters well trust me these ones that you have even heard put them to use be a doer of the word and not just hear a year alone really if you put this one this ones you have even heard if you put in your in use in your personal life your organization trust me you'll be better for it so let's go on a quick break um we'll come back right now to discuss chapter four and we will round up this book review stay with us the plant park all right welcome back this is plant park podcast your choice of for conversations in education remember that the show is brought to you by plant park consults Thank you for thank you for listening up to this point really thank you so 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 much remember to share with your friends i mean this is amazing you don't have to sit down to read your book in this busy life just ploy just listen to the podcast that you're doing going about your day driving cooking relaxing in the evening you understand going about your day to day activities and you'll be glad you did um, we have amazing book reviews will by will smith the 15 laws of personal growth nearly all the men in lagos are mad you are too good to feel this bad and very important and crucial conversations in education on the on in education on this platform so you do really good to listen to all of these episodes and share with your friends too so we are concluding this book review with chapter 4 chapter 4 says conversations rituals and artifacts so there's a quote here by john 
nice beat nice beat your nice beat says the most exciting breakthroughs of the 21st century will occur because technology because of let's let me take that again please the most exciting breakthroughs of the 21st century will not occur because of technology but because of an expanding concept of what it means to be human hmm. something to think about okay so remember this topic is conversations rituals and artifacts and i always say something first of all let me even start with this i always say this anything that can be mailed should not be a meeting and in fact anything that does not have lunch food and joy should not be a meeting any 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 meeting that 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 does not have lunch that does not have food that does not have joy you should just be sent as a meal and be ended there honestly Okay, so there's this experience I would like to share with you. In fact, while I was reading it, while, while I was remembering the experience, I was literally cringing at the thought again. Okay, so something happened that I sent my boss at some point. I sent him a sample meal that she got of our organization, you understand? Like, and all of that. And I just got a message. Let's have a meeting to discuss the mail you sent to me. I was like, okay, what's happening? Then we spent the next 45 minutes on Zoom. And all he was saying was, remove the S. <laughs> add full stop. Italian said, this one should go up. In my mind, I was like, you should add just, you read as we were reading it, just edit this thing and send it to me. Like, I can spot the difference. You would have just sent it. And Imagine seeing it. that day. I was just saying, I was like, man, oh my man. <laughs> I was like, you should have just mailed me though. Have you found yourself in such shoes? Like, I feel you, man. <laughs> okay, so let's dive into the chapter and go to joy, and let's see how it is done in the, in the joy incorporated way. Okay, first of Let's say that Ian Richard Sheridan says eliminate ritualistic, joyless, unproductive meetings from your process. I will take that again. Eliminate ritualistic, joyless, unproductive meetings from your workplace, your work processes. I feel that sometimes the reason bosses have meetings or meetings is because it reminds them that they are the boss and they are in charge of the meeting, they are your the guard, they are the boss. The second thing that Richard says is that replace rules, bureaucracy, and hierarchy with predictable rituals, with predictable rituals, ceremonies, and storytelling, storytelling event. That's what they did at Menlo's. Those meetings, those those whatever they have, they have clear structure with clear expectations for every participant. Everybody knows the purpose of these gatherings. These are responsibilities and exactly how decisions are made and documented. Have you gone to meetings that you are with people? That there's no even an agenda. The boss is just saying, eh, don't say. Eh, Choma. Eh, Jack. And your mind, you are wondering, like, what are we even doing here? Before you know, the boss just says, oh, one hour, 30 minutes. We need to finish this meeting now. And you are there for the next one. <laughs> oh my God, I've seen a lot. Okay, so. The principles for the storytelling events and everything they have are mellows. They encourage active participation, contribute to the human energy of its culture, and does not steal from it. So a typical example of one of those things they, they do is the lunch and learn that I told you about. You remember in the previous chapter. And there's also something they do. Um, the lunch and learn is held like weekly or as maybe like as the need occurs as well maybe um in every two two weeks or uh, weekly depending on what's going on and all of that and they are really quick things it's not like something that stays for long there's also something they do they call this daily stand up at 10. once it's 10 o'clock the dashboard alarm goes up goes off everybody gathers in the stands up and gathers around a rough cycle circle to report out on the group basically what they do is that 
they pick the iconic symbol of menlo which is a viking and helmet the person that is going first just picks it they of course you stand with your peer mate for the week the person just picks it says what they are doing for the week very briefly and where they might need help maybe something like oh my name is Tessin. i'm working on a project for for federal institutes for nigerian institute of or, or let's say okay my name is Tessin. i'm working on a project for nigerian institute of management i'm working with my friend here john and we might need your help with research so we'll come to the resources department to get some things um the it might help us with certain things when we are done with our work and we just move on to the next person so it's really quick and usually in less than 13 minutes the meeting is over at least also good so people can stretch their back so that's an example of things you can do to replace boring meetings meetings that if you're not there your your <laughs> your teammates will not will not even have the meeting in fact the only reason they're even there is because you said they should there they should go there so let's also mention that ritual should any ritual any company ritual you have should reinforce your company values at menlo's their values of course they are democratic and everything is polite everything that is done is polite and then um, there are quick talks with food energy. They also describe something that happens at Menlo that, Menlo that sometimes it just says hi John, like some it just says hi to somebody. Oh hi Uche, or oh, hi Ineka, you understand? It says hi to somebody, and the person just calls the person's attention. They exchange a quick glance. They understand what they are saying, so they don't spend all the time in the world setting up emails. You know google invite sometimes i feel that people even overuse technology and cloud people's spaces sometimes you open your mail and you just see people open, open their mail and just see google invite a calendar invite for this one reminder after the other please everybody should work together every that thing you are going to send as a mail or be asking when can we meet and and everything you just quickly go over to meet the person or call the person's attention and a person you understand knows what you are talking about. He now says something that note that conversations build relationships and relationships build value. If you can get two sides of your business, such as your business and production teams, or developers and clients, into regular and healthy conversations where it feels like a partnership, you can avoid the vicious, vicious war of competing values. Okay, let's round up with something very, very nice. Richard, in this chapter, Richard Sheridan gave an example of a restaurant on the west side of an arbor called Zingerman's Roadhouse. So, a Zingerman, Zingerman's Roadhouse is famous for its food, for its service, and its culture. So, one of the things they do at Zingerman is that they hold me- weekly huddles, like week- weekly huddle meetings. So what happens is that it's not that they are sitting down to talk about. What they do at this weekly holidays is that everybody from the wait staff to top management they meet once a week and then for just one hour and they they run the business together so like everybody is serving everybody is doing everything that needs to be done during one of those weekly holidays conversations also went on around the cost of goods being high and everything then the dishwasher the like the person that washes the clothes the sorry the dishes or that puts it in the dishwashing machine whatever it is that person does person now complained that the waste was really what was was consistently enormous and that may be the reason like the waste was just too much like all the time people were waste, wasting food so because the truth of the matter is that is it the management staff that will know what is going on but the person that washes the dishes can see the consistency it's like ah these people they're not finishing their chips or they're not finishing their rice they're not finishing whatever is being served to them so the team now decided that they were subsequently going to serve half of their current like half, half of what they currently serve that's what they will be serving people and that so that they would not also lose customer value they now said that Okay, after this first service, after you pay, if you want extra, you can come for more. And do you know what? What happened was that when they decided to do it, 
people were finishing their food a lot of food did not come for extra and they were able to cut costs imagine you you, you understand what what conversations the power of conversations can do for us in organizations honestly i feel that richard sheridan needs to write another book i mean he's nine years after the he first wrote this book now i mean he really needs to write another book for us so that we can know how to incorporate this into the into this remote hybrid work structure with the old covid people cannot even contact like have so much physical content as, as like things that are described in this book well of course you can pick up knowledge here and there that you would find useful okay so thanks for listening thank you thank you thank you thank you so much um share with your friends share on your social media platform if you want us to do chapter two you know we stopped at chapter four if you want us to do chapter two please let us know on any of our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, at Plumper Consults, just let us know or mail us at plumperc at gmail.com. Remember that you can contact us for teacher teacher trainings. You can contact us for train the trainer sessions, learning sessions for kids and adults, instructional design projects, counseling, collaborations, and everything education you understand. Thank you so much. The book we just reviewed is Joy Incorporated by Richard Sheridan. Make sure you listen to other episodes and see you in our next episode. Bye.